Welcome Team Iceland, welcome back to my channel, the place to be if you're planning a trip to Iceland. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you about the five pair of footwear that you're gonna wanna bring to Iceland on your trip. Now mind you, depending on where you're going and what you're doing, you might not need all of these footwear, but at least it's a good reminder of what you should bring and really have to consider Iceland is a different place than you might have visited before. So no matter what the elements Iceland throws at you, you'll be prepared. We're gonna dive right into the good stuff, but before we do, make sure that you are already subscribed to my channel because every single week I release a new video and I wanna make sure that you have the best information so that you feel confident about your trip. Hey, I'm Jeannie, and in 2014, my husband and I traveled to Iceland for our honeymoon. We fell head over heels in love with the landscapes, food, and culture, and less than a year later, we sold everything we owned and bought a one-way ticket back. Over the years, we've traveled all around this amazing country, uncovering the best road trip stops, foodie finds, and hidden gems. Now, I've made it my mission to be your one-stop resource and share what I know so that you can plan the best trip ever. Let's get into it. The first pair of footwear are hiking shoes. Hiking shoes are easily my go-to pair for outdoor exploring. These are good for in and out of the car, exploring the main sightseeing stops, anything where like the parking lot is pretty close to the attraction that you're going to see, right? Example, Cellulens Foss waterfall, parking lot, waterfall. Thingvetler, parking lot, stuff. What's important about hiking shoes are that they have a good grippy sole. So this is different than like a tennis shoe, which um, don't have good grips. So you can see that there's like, you know, these, it literally says, strict grip on the bottom here. It's a nice to have this grip because you're gonna be going over rocks and things like that and you just wanna have really nice soles. Also, these are pretty durable soles so I don't feel a lot underneath my feet. The other thing that is um, handy about hiking shoes is that they're breathable, you know, so that you're like not getting super sweaty inside your shoes, but then also waterproof. These are actually water resistant. I would say that if it's raining quite heavily or if we're gonna be, you know, crossing any streams or something that I would throw on another, a different pair that we'll get to in a minute, that's more waterproof. Um, but really like for 80% of the things that we do in Iceland, I'm just throwing on hiking shoes. And also these are pretty good for year round, but I wouldn't wear them in the winter, winter months um, when we're having a lot of snow. By the way, head to the description box below so you can head right over to the links. Um, I've linked up my favorite pair of all of this gear. Next up are hiking boots. I feel like I'm like, you know, the Zappos girl right now. <laughs> hiking boots are good for longer treks, or hikes that are, for example, probably one hour or longer. I like to use my hiking shoes because they're easy on, easy off, they're comfortable, blah, blah, blah. But a hiking boot is obviously essential for a lot of reasons. These are going up higher on my leg or my foot, so I get really, really good ankle support. They're also a lot more durable. So I, when I'm walking, uh, the sole doesn't flex so much, so it feels like I'm using my legs. Also, these are really you know sturdy so again a good grippy outsole is super important durable for rocks great for like you know slippery things i could go on and on these shoes are not a hundred percent waterproof but you know i would say like 95 percent with the exception of if i have to wade through a stream definitely definitely um, these are super super important so if you're doing a hike like for example the hangafoss hike in east iceland then i would throw this on if you're doing a multiple hour or multiple multiple day hike. That's a whole different category of hiking boot, but I have used this, for example, for the Fimber the Halls hike, which was 10 hours and they were fantastic. The next pair of shoes that you're gonna wanna have are a casual 
casual pair of footwear. So this is just one example, um, but this is uh, an example of something casual that I will wear while walking around Reykjavik, for example. Sometimes you just want to get out of the wet, muddy, sheet poop filled <laughs> shoes that you wore when you were exploring around all day. Am I right? Okay, so this is an example of a shoe or a boot that I would wear while walking around the city. This is a, an example of a boot that I would wear when we're going out for dinner. You know, if you're just hanging out at your hotel, having a glass of wine at the bar, things like that, you, you know, you're gonna want something other than just your outdoor shoes. I, you know, you don't, it definitely doesn't have to be a boot. It could be a sneaker of some sort. Basically, I would say whatever you feel comfortable walking around in. So if you're exploring Reykjavik for a day, then you know, you're gonna, you don't want your feet to hurt. So you wanna be able to be able to walk around for so several hours. Just keep that in mind. And with that, I have a question for you guys. Will you be spending your Iceland trip out exploring the countryside and all of the nature, or will you be hanging around in the city and being in and out of cafes and going out for dinners or a combination of both? Let me know in the comments below. The next category of footwear would be a special occasion. Now, this could be things like winter boots, for example. So if you are coming in the heat of winter, and I'm talking like November through March, which is when we get the most snow, then maybe you're gonna wanna bring a winter boot. This could be something that has much more insulation or goes up higher on your leg. Just keep in mind with winter boots that they take up a lot of room in your suitcase and they're a lot heavier. So make sure you absolutely need them before you decide to pack them. And I say this because I used to have winter boots that I would travel around with and I don't wear them anymore. For me, it's simply not practical I use my hiking boots for that reason. And this is just because for me, it's a lot easier for me to navigate around um, things without a bulky, bulky boot. So if I'm wearing my hiking boots, it's snowy, I'm still able to be, you know, covered up past my ankle. I can also throw on crampons, which we'll talk about in a minute, over my hiking boots. So those are really stretchy and that can support me that way. And then also, I really find that winter boots are usually pretty heavy. So in order to be like, you know, walking around and taking all these steps, like it's just more tiring to use winter boots compared to hiking boots. So definitely go with your own preference on that, but special occasion would definitely be a winter boot in this category. And then the other special occasion thing that I wanted to mention was if you want a dressier pair of shoe rather than just the casual shoe that you're bringing. So this could be if you're coming to Iceland for your anniversary or for your honeymoon, if you are attending a wedding or a special event in Iceland that you're gonna need a special shoe for. So obviously be prepared with what that would mean for you. And number five are flip-flops or sandals, whatever it is that you wanna have. Basically what this means is an easy pair of, you know, shoes that you can slip on and off. The main purpose of these would be for going in hot springs or pools. When you get out of a hot spring and your body is all cozy and your feet are all wrinkly, you don't always wanna just slide back into your socks and hiking boots. Am I right? Just having a really, you know, lightweight, these are literally so light. So just having a nice lightweight pair of flip flops or sandals that you can carry with you. So when you get out of the hot water, you're just sliding into those and then maybe going back to the car or your hotel, then putting your other pair of shoes on. And the bonus item, I'm sure many of you can guess, crampons. <laughs> my favorite thing in the world to talk about. So if you haven't watched already my winter packing video or things that you'll forget to pack for winter, um, I'll link both of those. Make sure to go watch those where I talk in depth about why you need crampons in Iceland. But basically, if you're traveling to Iceland between November and March, you need this accessory, need it. There's so much ice, um, they don't, you know, make sure that the sidewalks are clear. They don't make sure that the paths up to the waterfalls are clear. The paths around the waterfalls get extremely slippery from the spray. I could go on and on. Um, you need to bring extra grip. This is a pair of like ice spikes. So it's stretchy. This is rubber, so it'll stretch around your boot or your shoe. 
Um, also, I have a pair of Yak Tracks that I would wear. So I will, again, link both of these below. Super in inexpensive and it will save you on your trip. That's your bonus item. Last thing I wanna mention, if I didn't already say this, is that it's so extremely important, you guys, that all or any of the shoes that you end up bringing are waterproof or water resistant. It's very rare that it's like completely dry in Iceland. Whether you're going for a hike or it's just around the city, I mean, it's usually, we get a lot of precipitation here. <laughs> And so the last thing that you want is like wet feet, right? So forget the cloth shoes, things like Toms or those cute like Keds shoes that taught. Save those for another vacation because in Iceland, they're gonna get soaked and you're just gonna be like, why did I bring these shoes? All right, friends, if you found this list helpful, then you are going to love my free packing checklist. So make sure to grab that so that you are completely prepared for your trip. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description to this video so you can easily get it. That's it for today, Team Iceland. I hope you guys love this video. And if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you back here for another video next week. Happy planting, friends.